guys so today I'm going to give you a basic sewing tutorial to give you guys some basic stitches as well as a guide on sewing machine use so you guys can start off your suits with all the information you need so first of all we gone talk threads okay so first of all you have your all-purpose thread Th that's not it that's it good as you can see, you can break it with force, but don't let that phase you. This is the workhorse of threads, and it comes in many colors. Next up, you have upholstery thread. As you can see, it's thicker than the all-purpose thread, and if I try to break it, well, it, it breaks me before I break it. This is tough stuff. Now, there are other threads like this silvery embroidery thread, but we don't need that for fursuit making, so don't even worry about it. So, next up, we're going to talk about hand stitching techniques. But first, let's learn how to thread a needle. This is a basics video after all. I will be using these simple sewing needles, but you can use thicker needles for fur if you like. First of all, I have to find one of my massive needle pile. Somewhere. Ah, got one. So get your thread and break off a length. Stick it through the eye, pull it through and tie a single knot at the end. Just a simple loop and through. So the main method I use is the blanket stitch. You're going to start by putting your fluffy sides together and push the needle through the fabric and then back through the loop of the thread and pull tight. Now go through again and then stick it through the loop and pull it tight again and then repeat that again and again and again. <laughs> This is what the stitch should look like, though I tend to do them closer together when sewing properly. Now I've just done up some neater ones here and I'll show you guys how to tie this off. So first you go under the vertical stitch, then under the horizontal stitch, and then knot it off. A double knot won't hurt you either. Now let me show you a truly magical tool. This is called the quick unpick and it's a little metal thing that can quickly undo stitches by running the point underneath the thread and cutting it. Truly magical. Right, the next stitch I'm going to show you is the hidden stitch, or ladder stitch. This is great for places where you don't want thread to be seen. So you start by slip knotting the thread and going in little under over stitches on each side of the fabric. And when you pull it together, the thread will disappear. Right, no basic sewing tutorial will be complete without a button. So to sew a button back on, you first start with the slip knot to secure your thread and the button, and you wanna go over through the holes and back under and over and back and under and over and under and over and under and over. And then you wanna go the other way if you have a four hole button. Then tie a good double knot on the back. Congratulations, you're halfway through the tutorial. Let's have a kitter and doggo break. Now it's time to talk sewing machines. Uh, when you use a sewing machine, you have a bunch of different presser feet that can help you do different things. For example, this is your basic presser foot that will come with most machines and you can use it for most basic stitches. This is a zipper foot for sewing zippers. And this is an overlocker foot, but now we're getting into the more advanced and or vague feet, so you can do your own research into these. Now, before we get into the use of the sewing machine, we need to know how to pin our fabric. Pinning fabric makes sure it stays where we want it to when putting it through the machine. For first suit making, I prefer to use long quilting pins as it stays in the fabric easier. To pin your fabric, put the fluffy sides together, push your needle through the fabric and back the other side. Repeat this down the length of the fabric you want to sew. Right, now we can get into sewing machine use. When you first get your machine, it won't have any thread in it, which is no use to us. To thread your sewing machine, you first want to put your thread on your thread stick thing. I don't know the technical term. and you want to run it under and around the metal disc right here. 
Again, don't know the technical term. And then thread your bobbin by pushing the thread through the little hole and pushing into place. Then push your bobbin in to secure and push the sewing machine pedal to wind the bobbin. Remove extra thread, ideally using scissors, not like your teeth, not your teeth like I did. And once it's done, remove from the bobbin holder and cut the thread, but do not remove the thread from where we put it before. I repeat, do not remove the thread. Now, with the thread still under the disc, you first want to bring it down to the first slot of the machine, then around and up into the second, and then put it through the donkey head. Then bring the thread down and push it through, and then thread your needle. Next, we need to connect the two threads. So remove the bobbin cover from the bottom of your machine, and take note of which way the bobbin should spin. And push your bobbin into place and thread as instructed on the diagram, often under the notches in the bobbin holder. Once that's done, wind your machine using the side wheel to pull the thread up and through the hole. Give the top thread a little tug to help it through and pop the casing back on. You're now ready to sew. Now let's sew our pieces we pinned earlier. Using the lever to the back of the needle, pick up the needle and place the presser foot underneath and lower the lever to attach. Lift up your lever and feed the fabric underneath, then lower to prepare to stitch. Select your stitch using your stitch selector and using your hands to guide the fabric, press down on the pedal and start sewing. When you reach a pin, stop and pull it out and keep sewing. You'll notice I go back and forward at the end. This is called backstitching and stops our threads unraveling. It can be done using this handy dandy button right here. Once you're done, lift up the foot and cut the threads using the handy dandy thread cutter here on the side. Now, let me show you a different way to pin. I'm pinning a curved piece to a relatively straight piece, so the previous method of pinning would prove problematic. So instead, I'm gonna pin vertically, the same way as before, but it's at a 90 degree angle to the fabric. And we're done. Now, sewing this is a little different because when you sew, you no longer have to remove the pins. When sewing around curved edges, slow down your speed and use your fingers to guide the fabric. You can always put the needle down, lift up the foot, rotate the fabric and then put the foot back down if that's easier for you too. Sometimes your needle will unthread itself, but that's no worries, just rethread it and keep going. Now remove all the pins. I, I must admit this, this method does mean the death for many a pin. RIP needle, press F to pay respects. All right. I think that just about does it for a basic skills tutorial. What did you guys think? Sorry, it probably wasn't one of my most interesting videos, but I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway. Right, the fan art feature of the week is Annika Enderwolf, who drew me this epic piece of all my characters together. The patience it must have took to do this would have been incredible. So be sure to check out her furry amino. It'll be linked down in the description. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.